That's right. And and there's another worry to worry about on top of media impacts and uh, and the global warming. There's another thing to worry about, and that's solar flares from the sun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to think that the sun was pretty mild and not much happens, but we now realize that on a scale of centuries, uh, the sun has a temper tantrum. Uh, the last big solar flare was 1859. Mm-hmm. It's a Carrington event. Uh, Google it, and you'll be shocked what comes on your screen. In 1859, the sun went berserk. Uh, astronomer was looking at the sun, noticed a solar flare, and about eight minutes later, all of a sudden, telegraph wires were going berserk. Uh, all of a sudden, mm-hmm. in Cuba, they could read the newspaper at night by mm-hmm. the Aurora Borealis. When was the last time you saw the Aurora Borealis in Cuba? Telegraph wires went down, and messages were being sent even without electricity. There was so much electricity in the air that telegraph messages were being carried even though the telegraph itself was out. Mm-hmm. That's the Carrington event. That's when they didn't have satellites. They didn't have power stations. They didn't have refrigerators. If that Carrington event of 1859, uh, 150 or so years ago, happened again, it could wipe out, first all satellites would get wiped out, then transformers would short-circuit on the Earth, power failures would take place, refrigerators would go out, all credit card systems would go out, and there's no rescue team because the rescue crew is also out. So you're talking about not one Katrina, you're talking about thousands of Katrinas around the Earth simultaneously. Uh, Food riots would start within a few days because people have no refrigerators, the the food runs out. Uh, Business would come to a halt because credit cards cannot be done. Wall Street, of course, is paralyzed because there are no computers. You can't get on the Internet because satellites are out. Uh, No communications. We're we're so dependent on electricity. So we do have to worry about these things. Scientists have figured out that $2 trillion in property damage uh, modestly could uh, easily uh, be uh, that kind of damage could occur if there's another Carrington event. Well, you've got to go back that far to to look at the Carrington event. But uh, you know, just a few years ago, as a ham operator, I monitor the sun all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a few years ago, we've now, as you point out, we've got satellites that monitor what the sun does. And there was an event. Uh, fortunately for Earth, uh, this solar flare was not pointed in our direction, but it was so strong that um, it, the needles just pegged. In other words, the, the monitoring equipment wasn't even designed to measure a flare as large as we had. I just I can't recall the date of it. It was just a few years ago. A few years ago, right. In fact, our our astronauts were actually told to go to a certain compartment of the space station where they have more shielding. They were told to go there because they were in definite danger of being in the line of sight. What happened was a sunspot erupted, and a sunspot is like a rifle. It shoots a narrow beam of energy into outer space, and mm-hmm. fortunately, as the sun was rotating and the Earth was moving, this gun barrel missed the Earth, okay? But it was so frightening that needles went off scale. We had to tell the astronauts to, to go to a certain secure compartment in the space station. Uh, we dodged the bullet that time, basically. But, you know... Yeah, like how, how big... How big uh, I wonder if anybody knows how big that would have been had it hit... Earth directly compared to, say, the Carrington event? Uh, well, it wouldn't have been as big as the Carrington event. Uh, we looked at ice cores, by the way. Going back with ice cores, the Carrington event actually affects ice. And you can actually see that maybe on a scale of centuries, you, you can have another Carrington event. But the, the event that, that you referred to just a few years ago um, was not on that scale. However, we are very young in the space age. We've had very few experiences with this. It happens, first of all, the solar flares erupt every 11 years. These are called the sunspot cycles. Uh, and it's when the North Pole and the South Pole of the sun flip. Believe it or not, the North Pole and the South Pole of the sun flip every 11 years. It alternates. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a flip, there's a shock wave emitted from the sun, and that's the solar flare. Right now, we're in a low cycle. Uh, The next flare-up will be, believe it or not, 2012. That's the next cycle. We're in a low cycle right now. Many people are Not only low, uh, Professor, but so weirdly low that most days the sun is blank. I mean, it's it's eerie what's going on right now. We've got a few of the new polarity sunspots up there that have rotated around. We've seen them, but there's very little going on. It's like 
It's like the, the the quiet before the storm. Yeah, it is eerie. In fact, their paper is being published now among scientists saying, why? Why are we seeing very low sunspot activity? We haven't seen anything like this for quite a while. And we've been monitoring sunspots for over a century. You know, telescopes mm-hmm. uh, have been around for quite a while. We do right. monitor these sunspots. You have to go back a long time before you find this quiet activity like now. All right. Uh, anybody have any idea what's going on? Well, uh, right now, scientists are formally recommending that we reinforce our satellites so that they can withstand a blast of solar radiation, that power stations on the Earth be reinforced, cables be reinforced. But, of course, the politicians are doing nothing, right? But oh, scientists course. are recommending that we reinforce our power stations and reinforce our satellites. So there, there could be, uh, this could be the quiet before the storm. It's. It's possible. We, we actually know very little about sunspots. Uh, we've been monitoring them, you know, for over, over a century, but we very know very little about their activity. And uh, we don't even know when the, the, the last Carrington event was before 1859. You have to go back to ice cores. And so uh, one projection I saw said maybe once every 500 years. Uh, it's guesswork right now. We really don't know. We're putting darts on a dartboard. And... Could, there be, could there be a solar flare so big, Professor, that it would be an LA event? Uh, well, yeah, a catastrophic breakdown of modern society could take place very fast if there's another Carrington event. If that event of 1859 uh-huh. happened again, we're in, civilization is in real trouble. And uh, that's where we'll break right now. From Manila in the Philippines, Southeast Asia, for George Nori, I'm Art Bell.